the very last part of our ship pipeline is called flight prep. So we have the final geometry of the ship, we have the textures in place, and now we're just going ahead and we're adding in the damage states to these ships, making sure that parts of the ship break off, animating what's required for hangar and flight ready, making sure that UI is into the ships. We have to make sure that audio and VFX get their involvement into this stage as well. So blowing up a ship to 100% damage. The game balancing takes place, all the pretty textures, all the lighting, all the VFX. Pretty much every department in the company gets involved. Uh, as producer, you know, my primary role is, um, you know, to make sure that everyone knows what they're doing. To, you know, creating these beasts of, you know, ships, if you will. And we have a very, very large pipeline. You know, some of these ships are like floating levels. Um, whatever stage you're at, there's a knock-on effect to every other discipline here. So we get involved in the process, for, uh, ideally after the tech artists to kind of done uh, the majority of their work. Once they've got the kind of functionality in place, that's when we can then go in and kind of add the... The VFX could be seen as the polish, I guess, to that functionality. Um, so, for example, with the damage, when the ship is actually all broken up um, and that those kind of pieces can be broken off, then we then go in and kind of add the explosions and any smoke and fire and stuff like that to it. And this is the retaliator here, and basically... All I'm really doing here is just throwing missiles at it, just to kind of see how everything's reacting. And I could do this all day. <laughs> These ship artists make these beautiful ships and we get to blow them up in a blaze of glory, so yeah, it's kind of fun. <laughs> we check the forums, we also check the people upload a lot of their YouTube footage, which is really, really useful actually because they, the, the, the backers can test the game like we can't because there's so many more of them um, and it's always nice to kind of see them putting the ships into situations that we might not have envisaged. So actually, yeah, it's really nice to see. Um, so I handle uh, all the, the damage system, we work with the damage system that allows us to punch bullet holes through the ships and to burn them and scorch them and also to do the opposite of that to repair the ships and we're also responsible for the performance of the ships and how fast they render to make sure that we can uh, get a lot of ships on screen and that they all run at a nice fast frame rate for everyone. Yeah, we're pushing quite a lot more detail uh, in every regard than a lot of other games and definitely every game that the guys here have worked on before, so uh, the, the number of polys in the ships will be like five to ten times what, at least what people are used to. Um, the number of meshes we're using is very high. Texture detail is pretty insane compared to what most people have used to in traditional games. Um, type of the good news is there's a lot of optimizations we've still got to do. There's a, it's going to get a lot better than it is now. We've got a lot in the bag, hopefully, to, uh, to get back to ensure that the artists can stay at this type of high level of quality that they've been aiming for. So I'll take a early white box version of a ship and then I'll take the screenshots from that and I'll start overlaying some images over the top of that which uh, I'll label up and then send back to the artists and then they'll just build the screens according to the, the spec that I provide. You get information about your, your ship uh, in terms of you know, how damaged it is, you get information about your, uh, what level of shield allocation you're currently at or uh, your emissions levels. And what's neat about it is you can actually go into each of these screens and swap out the information that you display. So you can actually configure and customize uh, your experience. Yeah, so these are the docs that we supply to the artists with uh, the screen specs. So some ship elevations or some ship images that pinpoint exactly where the seats are on the ships. And then we break down those seats into uh, this table, which lists out the actual number of screens, screen types, the ratios. Let the artist know whether we definitely need this screen, whether we like this screen, or if it's an optional screen. And we'll often throw it into a screenshot as well to just show visibility. As soon as you put an abstract layer of UI, then it kind of reminds the player that it's a game. But if you can keep them in the world and you can keep them interacting with things that are actually on the geometry that's in the world, then it keeps the player kind of locked into the experience. You see, you see the screens flicker on and and you know it booting up and stuff, and it just really makes it feel like a uh, ship comes alive and things are functional, and you can do all, and you're like in control of uh, a spaceship. Each ship manufacturer has quite a clear set of um, rules that we follow to give them a sort of sonic identity, so you can understand that a um, uh, a ship made by RSI is sonically identifiable just just from the sound, which is which is really cool. So that's the doors opening, little hatches, seats coming back and forth, all those sort of nice little interactive elements inside of the ship that you get as the first step 
when it gets put into the hangar. Uh, and then after that it goes flight ready and we'll do things like the thrusters uh, and more recently we're going to start uh, sonifying the power plant and that's going to actually become quite a significant part of the sound of spaceships when you're listening to a sh your own ship from the interior. So once that goes in it's pretty much ready to go, uh, ready to put in the hangar and if it's for a flight ready ship then it's ready to go flight ready after the audio goes in. It's very rewarding to see it finally coming together, you know, and hopefully on a, a deadline that was um, originally agreed on. The level of talent's really high. It's some of the best guys I've ever worked with are in the studio and in uh, the partner studios as well. When you see the final ship flyable in game, um, knowing that it's gone through months of development and there's been a lot of heartache and a lot of pain and sweat and tears that's been put into that, it's, it's rewarding. Even the smaller ships, require an incredible amount of work to get them to be the level of quality or the fidelity they are. New starters are often shocked when they start here to see how much work it really takes to get one of them to completion. We all know what the vision is. We've all got kind of that, that high level vision in our minds from an early stage in the pipeline. So um, yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really kind of, it's enjoyable to see it kind of come to fruition at the end of that, of that pipeline. Yeah. When it's delivered, you know, and you know, where people have pledged and eventually the final ship gets there in their hangar, you know, what we hope to provide is this, it's that amazing sort of showroom, red bow on it kind of experience where they can go, yeah, look at that, I bought that, that's my ship. And even better, you know, I can get in it and now I can fly it. So that's our ship pipeline. Um, it's obviously a lot more complicated than A to B to C, but it is an incredible process full of just incredibly talented people who are doing amazing things. Uh, I, I certainly went into this never expecting the level of fidelity and detail and passion that these people would put into the game. And it is, it is a joy to see everything come back just beyond our wildest dreams. So thank you for watching. You uh, keep flying, we'll keep building them.